next verse and he said some say that thou art john the baptist some elias and others jeremiah's or one of the prophets next verse he saith unto them but whom say ye that i am and simon peter answered and said thou art the christ the son of the living god and jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou simon Berjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven it has to be revealed jesus is a revelation and the father is a revelation jesus is the revelation of god in human flesh jesus is the revelation of god jesus is not god's junior brother or errand boy jesus is actually god almighty in human flesh jesus is god revealed in humanity jesus is the exact accurate and precise revelation of god in human form the book of second timothy chapter 1 verse 10 but it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death. Jesus has abolished death. Death is abolished. Death has been destroyed, rendered useless, rendered inoperative and ineffective. And after abolishing death in his death, burial and resurrection, he has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He has brought life and immortality to light. So the preaching of the gospel is the preaching of life and immortality. Immortality means deathlessness. Immortality means you cannot die. The preaching of the gospel is the preaching of the triumph of life over death. Jesus said, he that has the son has life and has passed from death to life what it means is that the dominion of death has been totally destroyed that is the preaching of the gospel first john chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the record that god had given to us eternal life and this life is in his son this life is in his son so when you have the son you have eternal life when Christ enters the heart of a man, eternal life, which is immortality, which is what the gospel conveys, enters into the heart of that man. He had given to us eternal life or immortality. Life without end, eternal life. And this life is in his son. Next verse. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So Christ in the heart of a man is eternal life in the heart of that man. Which means immortality takes up residence in mortality. Immortality takes up residence in mortality. Now, in dealing therefore with the fatherhood of God and the family of God, in the humanity of Jesus, is a vital experience of God. The vital experience of God can be seen in the humanity of Jesus. The Father revealed Himself. The Father revealed Himself to humanity in His Son. That's why Jesus always referred to God as Father. As Father. Why? Because the revelation of the Father is seen and found only in the Son. Look at the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 22. All things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. That is, you cannot know the Father until the son reveals the father to you and you cannot know the son until the father reveals the son to you so the son reveals the father the father reveals the son so both the son and the father has to be revealed it is that revelation 
when it happens to you and you believe it at the point of that revelation is where the amalgamation between deity and humanity takes place that is where the union between God and man takes place and that union is what gives birth to a son of God you cannot find God any attempt to find God will lead you in error it is trying to find God that has given birth to all kinds of fetish worship idol worship occultism is man trying to look for God so he stumbles into all kinds of things that are a make-believe but not God the reason why you can't find God is because God is a revelation God is not in a location somewhere God is everywhere so through the vehicle of the gospel or through the conduit of the gospel God is revealed to a man through the instrument of the gospel when the gospel is preached it is called the word of faith it is called the word of faith meaning that the totality of God is encapsulated in the word of God so when the word of God is preached God is revealed on that revelation faith comes alive when faith comes alive makes its revelation a birth takes place or a resurrection takes place born again is a resurrection from the death to life born again is a resurrection from eternal damnation to eternal life all right now so therefore jesus is god who became a man so man can know god jesus did not come to reveal god jesus is god revealing himself jesus did not come to explain god jesus is god explaining himself so jesus is the comprehensive revelation of god jesus is the accurate precise exact revelation or exact unveiling of god meaning when you see jesus there is nothing to god that is hidden any longer jesus expressly unveils the father he reveals the father the book of hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 tells us that jesus is the perfect imprint of god he is the perfect he is the brightness of god's glory and the express image of his person jesus is the express image of god give me the amplified of hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 he is the sole expression of the glory of god the light being the outraying or radiance of the divine he is the perfect imprint and the very image of god's nature he is the substance that makes god god he is the very image of god's nature philippians chapter 2 verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus next verse who being in the form of god Taught it not robbery to be equal with God. Give me the amplified of verse 6. Kabayatara. Amplified version. Who although being essentially one with God. And in the form of God. Possessing the fullness of the attributes. Which make God God. Jesus possesses the fullness of the attributes that makes God God that is Jesus is not junior God that is Jesus is not a prophet Jesus is God Almighty he possesses he carries within himself the totality of deity now hold on hold on so Jesus possesses the attributes that makes God God So when Jesus walked the face of the earth, it was God walking the face of the earth. Whatever Jesus did was God doing it. And whatever Jesus didn't do, God never does. Because Jesus was God in human form explaining God to humanity. Because in the Old Testament, 
The prophets of old have murdered God's character. They assassinated God's character. And they presented a deformed God, an agitated God, an unstable God, and a God who lacks integrity. Because the Old Testament prophets didn't know God. So they said things like, he kill it and make it alive. He give it and take it. So they painted the picture of a God that is dual natured. A God that is inconsistent, hence lacks integrity. Meaning you can't rely on him. You can't depend on him. Meaning when you are doing business with God, you must have a plan B. Because you never can tell his erratic nature which side you will encounter. So God's character has been mutilated by men who didn't know him. So when God saw that humanity can never have an active, vibrant, healthy relationship with him. God himself became a human being so he can walk among men and correct the records and say this is how I am so Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil why God was with him now so James 1 17 now says every good and perfect gift cometh from above so God is good 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 always good in spite of how bad you are he does not do anything in response to what you have done he did what he will do based on who he is before you do what you do and what you do does not change what he has done that is why he's consistent he says i am the lord i change it not Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you don't know the character of your father, you cannot be a very good family member. If you can't trust your father, you can't be a good family member. You must be able to trust your father. <laughs> so that's why God took all of that to come down to earth and reveal himself to man. The fact of the father and son relationship is found in Christ. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The father. So the father and son relationship is found in Christ. Meaning that the family of God is found in Christ. That is, if you are not born again, you are not a son of God. You are not a son of God. God is the creator of everybody. But he is only a father to those he has given birth to. God cannot father you because you are a human being. Mm -mm. He only fathers his children. And there is a process of becoming a child of God. It is not automatic. It is not automatic. You don't become a child of God just because you're a good man. You don't become a child of God just because you're a moralist. Uh -uh. Just like you do not become Mr. Biggs because you're inside Mr. Biggs. You don't become a child of God because you're in church. You don't become a child of God because you answer the name Christiana. So you can be in church, but you're not born of God. There is a process through which God gives birth to his children. There is a process. Church membership does not make you a son of God. Fasting and prayer does not make you a child of God. Singing hymns and psalms and being in the choir does not make you a child of God. Being an elder does not make you a child of God. Being a deacon or an apostle doesn't make you a child of God. You can carry all the title, you are still a child of the devil. 